book of Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. We'll look at a couple of familiar verses. Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. The title of the message is, You Can Have Stress-Free Life. You Can Have Stress-Free Life. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And with Brother Lee, can you open us in prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to gather together to honor you and glorify you. We pray for uh, Pastor Jay uh, as he preaches God's words today. I know you gave him a wisdom and a knowledge, and but we want to we want to hear your word through him. Uh, we also pray for Pastor Shri. Um, in your will, uh, please heal him. Um, and we pray for brothers and sisters who could not be here because of any other um, health reasons. Bless them and comfort them. And I pray all this in your Son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 Stress is something that plays a huge part in everyone's lives. Whether you're saved, whether you're unsaved, whether you're a man, woman, whether you're an adult child, stress is something that plays a big role in everyone's lives. These verses that we see today, however, gives us comfort and encouragement. Think about it. You know, a lot of people pay money to see a shrink, you know, psychiatrist, psychologist, counselors, to feel kind of, you know, stress-free, worry-free, because too many people live with anxiety. And as Christians, you know that you're safe from hell, and the Lord is with you. And no matter what happens, if you you know, trust the Lord, and if you hang on to like Romans 8, 28, you should not have any anxiety or stress or worry in your life. However, that's not the case. You see too many Christians, their face is full of anxiety. We don't know what's going on in your life, in their life, but something has gotten hold of them, and this stress is ruining their relationship with Lord Jesus Christ. I hope, you know, pray that if you are one of those, you know, persons where current stress, anxiety, and worry has gotten a hold of you, and you do not have that perfect peace in your life, you know, through the Word of God, through preaching, through prayer, you can have that perfect peace. Number one thing is that anyone listening or in this room who's not saved, you'll never have peace. You'll never live a stress-free life. You could earn hundreds of thousands and millions of dollars. However, that will not give you stress-free life. Instead, they will give you more stress, more anxiety, more worry. You're thinking about, how am I going to keep this up? How am I going to keep this lifestyle? How am I going to continue with this money? Or someone who's in a thinks that they're in a perfect relationship. You know, they have stressful thoughts. Why? Is this going to continue, right? Is that person going to continue to love me five years from now, ten years from now, even tomorrow, right? If you're living with someone or if you are in a relationship with someone who's very fickle, right? But again, going back to you know beginning, if you're not saved, you will never have a st stress-free life. When you're sick, when you get into an accident, huge accident, when something terrible happens, when you hear about pandemic, when you hear about all these life troubles and it actually hits you personally, 
you'll be like, oh man, unless you completely blacked out your brain, you'll be thinking, what's going to happen to me after I die? What is going to happen to me after I die? And you're going to be worried. You're going to have that stress. That stress you shouldn't have. Why? Because if you trust Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, just like you know our sister Tracy's friend, if you realize you're a sinner on your way to hell, you have willingness to turn from sins, you believe that Jesus is God, you trust his precious blood to wash away your sins and accept him in your heart, not in your life, right? He's in everyone's life. But in your heart, as your Lord and Savior, the Bible says you have eternal life, right? But as many as received him, to them gave you power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. He that hath the Son has life. He that hath not the Son has not life. These things have I written unto you, that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life. That's a strong statement from the Word of God. Word of God said that you, 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 and you may know that you have eternal life if you trust that Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And that's one thing that you never have to worry about, burning in hell forever. Because of charismatics, because of Calvinists, because of, you know, Catholicism, because of all these cults out there, you know, too many people, millions of people, don't have assurance of salvation. I mean, I was one of them too. However, Jesus Christ died for you how many times? Once. You accept him as your Lord and Savior once, you're saved once and for all. And you're like, oh man, but there are verses in the Word of God. That's where you need to rightly divide the Word of God, study the Word of God. But one thing for sure right now in this church age is that if you accept it and trust that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, you never have to worry about burning in hell. I'm not worried about you burning in hell. You could worry about you burning in hell, but I'm not worried. Because the Bible says you're saved, and you're saved forever. Once saved, forever saved. You could worry all you want. You could worry about me all you want. Saying that, you know, I'm going to burn in hell, or if I don't live a, you know, right life. But no. My body and my soul separated once and for all, you know, spiritual circumcision. When things are circumcised, you know, you can't put it back, right? And my soul will spend eternity in heaven. So, whether you're listening here or whether you're listening online, you do not have to worry about burning in hell forever. However, as a Christian, because you have flesh, old nature, you are not going to be perfect until the day of the rapture or until your day of death, you know, until you're out of here. Then, as you live a Christian life, you could live stress-free. How many of you guys in this room, not raising your hand, you know, just answering in your heart, you have something that you're worrying about? Are there anxieties in your life? Are there stress that has gotten taken hold of your life where you do not have that perfect peace? Again, it could be health problems. It could be finances. It could be relationship problems. It could be work problems. However, these things should not keep you from having perfect peace. Why? The Word of God says so, right? You say, I believe in the Word of God. I trust the Word of God. Then, the Bible says, be careful for nothing. Why are you worried? Why are you full of anxiety? Why are you stressed out, right? It just shows that you don't have perfect peace, it just shows that you're not relying on the Lord 100%. In your life, you're relying something other than the Lord. Then you will have stressful life. How can I have 100% peace when I trust in something and anything other than the Lord Jesus Christ? That's why when people worry, Nothing's going to really resolve itself, right? Can your anxiety, can your stress resolve problems? Say I have to get a job. 
does worrying about it going to get me a job? For some of you, you guys need to get married. Right? I, I want to get married. So worrying about it, is it going to send you a mate? No. I'm like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm not doing good health-wise. Is anxiety and that stress about your health going to resolve your health, health problems? No, it's not going to. If you have anything that's stressing you out, if you have anything that you're worrying, is there anything that you have anxiety about? You have to bring it to the Lord. You have to bring it to the Lord. And not just bring it to the Lord. You have to trust Him 100%. A lot of times people get into this, how should I say, you know, false sense of thinking that when you pray to God, God's going to answer your prayer. Just like, you know, like prosperity people, right? You pray to God, God's going to give you a million bucks. You, know, you pray to God, God's going to give you money, right? You pray to God, you know, you're going to be healed, right? Just like that. No, it doesn't work like that. You know, that's your way of thinking. You know, that's how the devil wants you to think. Then you get a, if Lord doesn't, in your brain, Lord did not answer your prayer, then you start blaming God, right? How many times has it happened to you in your life where you pray to God about a certain thing, right? And it didn't go your way. Then you start blaming God. God, I thought I'm your loving child. How come you didn't answer my prayer? That is how devil wants you to think. Of course, there's a reality of pressure in your life. That's how you have stress. You know, in Joel 14, 1, it says, Man born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. So just because you're saved doesn't mean that you're going to have a peaceful life forever and ever and ever. You will when you go to heaven, right? However, as, you're, as you and I live in this world, we will face trouble. If not every day, almost every day. I mean, Paul wrote of the pressure and stress he had to endure in his ministry. If you look at you know, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and chapter 11. I mean, stress is dubbed as a health epidemic of this century. Right? Think about it. Without all this technology, we would have less stress. Because technology brings about news so fast. And then you start worrying more and more. Think about if we were living in, you know, 18th century, where there was no TV, right? No internet. Even, like, go back to people who's old enough. Go back to, like, 1980s or early 1990s, when there wasn't something called internet, when there wasn't something called smartphone, right? I feel like you and I lived a more peaceful life. We had less things to worry about. We had less things to bother us, right? As technology advances, you get to see more and more of worse things of the world. And you get to encounter more things. And you get to follow and you get to hear all this negative news out there. And you're like, oh, man, oh, I hope that doesn't happen to me. Oh, I hope, you know, things are going to be okay. And then you start letting this pressure start stressing you out. You know, I'm, I feel like, you know, if I could start over, you know, maybe if I wasn't safe, or maybe for young people, I should have become like a psychiatrist, right? I mean, to me, it's like, you're just telling them, okay, you're okay. You don't have to worry. Everything's going to be all right. And that's like the conclusion of it. People go to see those shrinks to, okay, I, I want to have that peace, right? Talking to him for an hour gives me that peace. But... Right that evening, next day, they become stressed out again. And this is continuously going to grow and grow and grow. Why? Because there's pressure of job again, there's family, there's health, and living in this crazy world, pandemic. So there's going to be 
stress and reality of pressure all the time. But as Christians, you're going to face more pressure. Why? You're not just facing, you know, job, you know, family health problems only. You're facing devil's attack. Turn your Bibles to 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5. So think about where are my stresses or where's my stress coming from? Where's my anxiety and worry coming from? Number one thing is that it shouldn't be because, you know, you don't know where you're going after you die. But it's afterwards. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. The Bible says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. You're going to be pressured constantly by devil's attack. Devil's not going to leave you alone. He's just like a roaring lion. Do you think roaring lion's going to just be like, you know, just poke you and be like, you know, I got you? No. He wants to devour you. And as a child of God, you know, you got to be pressured, stressed out, because this world system is controlled by the devil. And as you know, when you look at this pandemic and everything else, Confusion and pain and more anxiety has been created by it. Then you need to recognize it. Man, do I see devil's attack in my life? It, is devil's attack really affecting me negatively in my walk with Lord Jesus Christ? You have to recognize it. Instead of keep on trying to be like, oh, Lord, give me this, give me that. And Lord, take my stress away. Think about where it's coming from. Is it coming from you? Are you not recognizing your flesh and the world and the devil attacking you? And then you have, you know, put your guard down and then let them control your life? However, even this same chapter has solutions. Let's go to verse 6. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6. The Bible says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Maybe, for some of you, your problem is the pride. Because of your pride, you can't get away from your stress. Right? Some people have pride with material things. Maybe you used to have something and you no, no longer has it. And they're like, oh man, how am I gonna get that back? But you don't even know if it's God's will that you shouldn't have it anymore. And you keep on worrying. Who am I? You know, I'm up here, so I should have those. So pride has gotten a hold of you where you're not humbling yourself in front of God. When you don't humble yourself, what's going to happen? that pride is going to take care of you. you know, instead of thy will in your prayers, you're going to say my will constantly. Think about it. When you pray, do you pray, does your prayer consist of more and more of my will instead of God's will? I'm sure it is if those of you who are stressing out, you're constantly thinking about your things only. And you're constantly thinking about me, 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 me. I mean, it's a very, very, you know, cliche topic, but simple solutions because they're a simple problem. Why? Because you are constantly always thinking about yourself only. That's something that I could be reminded every single day. You know, stop thinking about yourself. You know? Why are you always thinking about yourself, right? You're thinking about your looks, your finances, you know, obviously your relationship, and everything else, slew of things. All you're doing is thinking about yourself. Then, you can't really do, verse 7, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Because you're, you're not humbling yourself. How would you cast all your worries, anxieties, stress, care, 
on the Lord Jesus Christ? If you think that I could handle it, if you think that you know, I deserve it, right? You have to lower yourself. You want to be stress-free? Constantly lower yourself. You have to be humble. You know, sometimes people with least things to worry about are people who have the least things, right? They don't really have to worry about much things. And then, you know, sometimes you look at, you know, documentaries, people living in third world countries, you know, they just, they are so happy if they just have a food on the table and place to sleep. If they have those, they live a very peaceful life. They don't expect cars. They don't expect, you know, two-story houses. They don't expect, you know, Lego toys or G.I. Joes, you know, back in the day, or Barbies. No, they play with, you know, whatever they see out there, right? Whether it's rock, whether it's, you know, grass, reeds, anything. But they're happy. However, people who are living in, like, you know, these industrialized countries, you worry about too many things. You know, you complain about your food on the table, you complain about the place you live in, you complain about what car you drive, you complain about your bank account, you complain about every little thing. When those people don't even have to worry about those things. Then, as you look at yourself, you know, who am I? Who am I to, like, worry about these things? I mean, I should just be thankful about it, right? Why do I deserve that? Why? Why do you deserve it anyways? Can you tell me? Can you tell your family? Can you tell your friends? Why do you deserve what you're asking for? You say, I deserve a better car. Why? Does your car drive you from A to B? I deserve a better house. Why? Do you have a place to live in? Does that protect you from, you know, harsh weather? I need a better husband and better wife. Why? I mean, you think that next person will be better than current person? No. You should realize that you are nothing but a wretched sinner saved by grace. And you should be thankful for everything. And you should not take anything for granted. I mean, you want to know what humility is? Someone who doesn't take anything for granted and someone who's thankful for everything. Every little thing, every part of their life. Did you thank God for the air that you breathe in today? Did you thank God that you're alive today? I mean, if you don't, how can you call yourself a Bible-believing Christian when you're not even thankful for the simple stuff? I know that people pray, right? I thank God that we're able to meet and worship the Lord. There's a place, local church, everywhere, right? Have you ever really thanked God for your local church? I mean, have you ever thanked God for the Word of God today? Without the Word of God, you and I wouldn't be here. I mean, have you ever thanked God for, I mean, just the little minute things, the clothes that you're wearing, especially young people? Did you thank God or are you complaining Oh, man, I wish I had a better brand clothes, right? You know, my clothes shouldn't come from, you know, this place. It should come from this place, and it should have this logo. Wow. You know, who do you think you are, right? Uh, I think at the judgment seat of Christ, a lot of us going to hear that, even if it's not right now. I mean, who do you think you are? Right? Who do you think you are? You are nothing but a wretched sinner saved by grace. Right. That's it. Going back to dust. That's it. When you realize that, there's less thing to be stressful about. You know what? I'm nothing, right? Lord giveth and Lord taketh away, right? Blessed be the name of the Lord. I mean, that's the attitude that Job had, right? Person who actually lost more than any one of us could ever imagine. Then, who are you to be complaining and be stressful about certain things of life that you shouldn't be, right? Let's go back to Philippians chapter 4, 6 and 7. Then let's look at how can we have perfect peace. 
Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, the Bible says, be careful for nothing. I mean, that's God's command, right? First of all, don't worry. Don't have stress. I mean, you shouldn't be anxious. But in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. So think of it like this, simple. You know, prayer is like asking, and supplication is like begging, right? You know, you pray with supplication, like begging, right? You know, more sincere, more zeal of prayer. With thanksgiving, right? With thankful heart. Then what happens? Look at verse 7. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. You know, sometimes when you read it, wow, what does this mean? And the peace of God, which passes all understanding. What it means is that when certain things happen in your life, there's no more why reaction coming from you. You know, when certain things happen in your life, first thing that comes through your head is what? Why? Why is this happening? Why is this happening? However, when you leave everything in Lord's will, again, it's not your will, God's will, you will pass that understanding part where you're like, God, I know it's in your will. I trust in you. And that's it. Then what happens? You have perfect peace. People who ask why, they, they won't have perfect peace. They start reasoning with themselves. They start justifying. Why did this happen to me? Why did this happen to my family? God, why did this happen? You're not at that passing understanding stage yet. But when you realize that, you know what? I don't need to ask why. I don't need to worry. I don't need to be stressful. You know why? Because I let everything in God's control. I am 100% in God's control, and I want God's will to be done in my life. That's it? Then, wow, I have perfect peace. You know, whether I'm poor, whether I'm rich, right? Whether I'm sick, whether I'm healthy, it's all in God's will. Why? Because what the Bible says. Then, in Jesus Christ, think about it. You can't have that perfect peace. The reason you don't have perfect peace right now, again, is what? When you pray, when you ask God for something, and when something happens in your life, you're doing it for your own will. That's why you shouldn't be praying my will be done, Lord God. Well, you should be praying, thy will be done. That's how Lord Jesus Christ prayed. Why is it that you say, I want to be, like be more like Jesus, but you don't follow? It's all talk for many of you. However, if you really want to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, if you want to have that perfect peace, what would you do? No matter what happens in my life, I'm just going to trust in the Lord and His will then there's no reason for me to say why, right? Because Lord knows the best. And this is how Lord wants to take care of things. Am I going to question Almighty God on how he, you know, deals or resolve things? No, not at all. So if this has to happen in my life, Lord God, then let it be. I trust in you. Lord, if I don't get this in my life, let it be. I trust in you, Lord, because I want your will to be done in my life, not my will. Then, when you look at verse 7, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding. Normal understanding cannot understand what I just said, where you shouldn't have why, where you shouldn't be doing, where, you know, you shouldn't have stress, worry, you know, anxious life. That's all you know, secular outside thinking. But according to the Word of God, the way God wants you to have perfect peace is you let Him take control of all of your life from A to Z, and you trust Him of all of your life, A to Z, and you let His will, not your will, not my will, you let God's will 
be done in your life, then you will have perfect peace. Then you can have stress-free life. Wouldn't that be wonderful? When you and I don't have to worry about anything, you and I don't have to worry about this certain stuff and stressed out about it. Why? Because it's in Lord's hand. Because it's Lord's will being done. And I pray with thanksgiving, with supplication. And I know and I trust in the Lord that he'll take care of it. Then, I mean, he loves you as a child, right? You're his child. Don't you think Lord's going to take care of you as a child, as a loving father? Then why would you have any stress in your life? Let's pray. Dear Father, thank you for the word of God. We fall into this trap. We fall into this pit of misthinking and misunderstanding because of our own lust and because of our selfish ways and you know, because of our pride, where we constantly request and pray just for our will. And when it doesn't happen, we get stressed out. We, have anxi we are anxious and we're full of worry. Lord God, I pray that all of us will just 100% trust in you, go to you in prayer 100%, and just trust in you to do your will, Lord, not our will. And we know that then the peace of God which passes understanding will be evident in our life. Lord God, we pray for those who are sick, Lord, according to your will, Lord, please heal them, Lord. We do want to see him and worship you together. I pray that those who couldn't make it for any other reason, Lord, you will be with them. I pray that you'll bless the rest of the day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, thank you, everyone.